Hey creators, Valentin here. In today's video, I'll give you 10 tips on how to make better travel videos. It doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or a professional. This guide is for everyone. It also doesn't matter what type of camera you're using. All these tips also apply to smartphone photographers and videographers. I've started traveling the world together with my wife in 2016. And so far, we've been to Thailand, the Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, and many more countries. During this time, I have created many different travel videos and now is the time to share some of my most impactful tips with you guys. This point is especially important when you're trying to tell a story. If it's just impressions of a road trip, there's a good chance you can run and gun as much footage as possible and cut everything together later on. Stories that were carefully crafted beforehand are usually much more interesting though, which is why I would suggest to plan your shooting sessions in advance. If you know that you will go to a place where mass tourism is an issue, you should be the first or last person to be there. That way you can get the best shots from places that others have only seen with huge amounts of people around. Another thing you shouldn't forget is that the time plays a very important role in the lighting. So find out about the golden hour, sunrise and sunset times in advance to get these types of shots, which, let's be real here, are a lot more interesting to look at. Having three individual cameras and five different lenses will make no difference if you don't know how to use your equipment properly. In this case, there's a good chance that a smartphone camera will give you better results as it is light and easy to use, which means that you can catch interesting moments a whole lot faster. Make sure to keep your backpack and equipment as light as possible. Your bag will thank you for it and it will be a lot easier for you to choose the right camera and lens in the right moment, which leads us to our next point, use your equipment in the right situation. You have an action cam, so use it for action scenarios like these, where a large and expensive camera just wouldn't work or be in danger of damage due to lack of being waterproof, etc. An action camera without action will look boring and out of place in most other cases though, so make sure to use whatever fits the situation best. Flying drones has gotten a lot harder with all the new rules, but the results they can give you will take your viewers breath away almost every single time you use it. So let it fly and get the shots, but make sure to inform yourself about all the rules and restrictions before flying. I have done videos where I compared smartphones to expensive cameras in the past, and I noticed that people with no background in photography and videography hardly noticed any difference. Some shots even look better straight out of camera on the smartphone. It is very hard to catch the exact moment with a camera, and some would even argue that it is impossible altogether. Try to cover as many different perspectives as possible to put your viewers right into your location. That way you can make sure that your viewers feel the same way as you did when you were at that specific place. Wide angles are the right way to show your audience the landscape you're in. For close-ups, it's a good idea to use a zoomed-in lens so the background is blurred out and the focus is on the subject. Using a longer lens will bring your background closer to your main subject, which creates a sort of compressed look that can be very interesting. This effect isn't possible with a wide-angle lens, which will make everything in the distance look even smaller and further away. Wide angles are also a lot less prone to camera shape. On the other hand, a lens with a strong zoom will amplify even small shakes and make them look much worse. If you're using a smartphone, the same tips apply here as most have multiple cameras or lenses nowadays. Also, to diversify your shots, you can use time lapses, hyperlapses, stop motion or slow motion, which leads us to our next point here. And don't just record everything with 120 frames all the time. Depending on your timeline, this could result in frame skipping and stutters in your final video, which you definitely want to avoid. Use slow motion and fast motion wisely, but sparingly. If your entire video consists of only slow motion, it will most likely look extremely boring. I would suggest to use speed ramps with smooth curves to make transitions from slow motion to fast motion or just regular motion. If you just speed up a shaky shot, that will result in even shakier footage. On the other hand, slowing down a shot will reduce shakes and make them less noticeable, which can be helpful if you don't have a camera stabilizer like a gimbal for example. Even when you're using fast motion in form of time lapses, make sure they're as smooth as possible. Neutral density filters can be really helpful here to make the footage look less jittery, but even if you haven't used one, there's a good chance that you can add some motion blur in post to smoothen it out a bit. Choosing the right track for your travel video can be tough sometimes. Don't let yourself be discouraged if it takes you hours to find the right music though. If you have a very specific idea in mind, choosing a song that fits your video perfectly will hugely improve the quality of your final result. One thing most people don't focus on are sound effects. These can make travel videos a lot more perceptible, like in this example right here. 
I can feel the last rays from the setting sun warming my skin. The salty sea air and the sound of the crashing waves permeate my senses. It is so silent, and somehow it is not. Right now, I am happy. Isn't that all that matters? I mostly use music from Artlist and can recommend the platform. For me, it is particularly important that the music can be used on YouTube and other social media platforms, and that is the case with Artlist. If you're looking for free music or sound libraries, you can watch my video over here. One more thing to note here is that silence or just sound effects can be very interesting as well. Using it together with music can be a great way to change the mood of your travel video. A very important tip which one can certainly underestimate is to allow yourself enough time for the shots. You should film longer than you think you need to, so that you can cut the beginning and the end and you'll have enough room for the perfect shot without shaking or make it a slow motion so that it fits into your timeline. This will ultimately give you more options in your video editing process, which is always great. Only if you give yourself enough footage, you can choose the best scenes and your video will be absolutely stunning. If you notice camera shake, blurry or unsharp footage during the recording process, go ahead and repeat it until your shot is perfect. This doesn't mean that you have to show every single shot you have captured though. It's better to make your travel video short and special instead of long and boring. Hours of footage result in just a few minutes and that's absolutely normal and nothing you have to worry about. Color grading can hugely impact how your images look and feel to your audience. Before you dive straight into color grading, make sure to correct your footage though so that the starting point is easier to work with. This is where you should fix things like white balance and exposure to make them look as natural as possible. This will make color grading a lot easier as every single clip will have a similarly looking starting point. If you aren't looking for a heavy grade, this might be everything you need. Although it is possible to completely change a scene with color grading, I think that it is a lot better suited for small adjustments that can make your scene feel warm and cozy or cold and dark. The teal and orange look is very popular among travel videos as it creates a nice contrast of the two opposite colors. There are a lot more styles that you can use to color grade your footage though, and I wouldn't recommend to always just go for the teal and orange look. Of course, you could just go ahead and use some LUTs, and if you like the results, there's nothing wrong with that. If you aren't using the same camera or source footage as a LUT maker though, a LUT can be pretty destructive, which you should definitely keep in mind. I won't be going into too much detail here as color grading is an art in itself and it isn't easy to do it very well without experience. If you want to find out how I color grade my videos, you can watch my video right here where I show you how I do it in DaVinci Resolve. Making in-camera transitions and movement is a lot easier if you plan your shots beforehand. Whipping your camera into one direction at the end of a shot just to start with that same movement on another shot can create a very nice effect without a lot of additional work in post. One thing I like to do to make this transition a lot more interesting is to use speed ramps. Speed ramping allows you to accelerate and decelerate between these clips to sell the effect even better. Other than that, camera movement in general can help your audience feel right in the moment when done correctly. Push-in movements, for example, are great if you want your audience to feel like they're actually walking on the same path as you do. You can also combine things like a push-in with a reveal from bottom to top to increase tension. These sorts of camera movements also work with drones and usually have a nice flow. You definitely don't want your footage to look like this though. Since our brain is automatically stabilizing everything for us, we're expecting it to be the same when we're watching a video. That is why shaky footage is so hard to look at and why you should focus on capturing as smooth movements as possible. Achieving unique movements in perfectly stable shots like these can be a lot easier with a gimbal. Remember though that most gimbals are quite heavy and setting it up on the go can be time consuming. I have made a video about the, in my personal opinion, best travel gimbal when I was in Malaysia and if you're interested in that video, you can watch it over again. This is a really big topic, but here are my tips for a better composition in travel videos. Think about what you want your audience to focus on. This must be absolutely clear when shooting. Try to eliminate things that are distracting your views from the main subject. It's not only about what's in your frame, but also about what's not in your frame. So like I said in the first tip, plan ahead what type of shots you need. Set the best time for a relaxed shooting session, and if there are some people, wait until you can get a clean shot. If not possible, use a different angle like a zoom for example that works for your type of story and makes the footage look as magical as possible. Patience is key here, but if you follow the tips in the very beginning of this video, it will be a lot easier to compose for a nice shot. If you don't know about the rule of thirds yet, you should learn to utilize it to make your composition as balanced as possible. In essence, you want your subject to be sitting on one of the thirds here and always face towards the middle. Leave enough headroom when you're filming people, but don't overdo it. 
When you're filming landscapes, the rule of thirds is also very helpful as it allows you to balance the horizon line quite easily on one of the thirds. These aren't rules you should just save into your brain though, without any room for adjustment. They are more of a guide and if you know about them or what kind of feeling they portray, you can also break them to evoke specific feelings in your audience. This last point is more of a reminder than a tip, but I still wanted to include it in the end here. Creating a story with a specific purpose or meaning can be challenging, but very rewarding. If you focus on getting the right content and follow the previous tips, telling a meaningful story will be a lot easier. Even if you haven't planned your shots beforehand, you can still add a voiceover to tell a story with the footage you have and give it a special meaning. This way you can basically enjoy all the moments while you're traveling, take the best shots you can, and then get a good emotional voiceover to tell the story you have personally experienced. If you can make people smile even if it's only in their head, that's a good achievement. Evoking any type of emotion is great. That's what makes people remember your video above everyone else's. And here's a bonus tip. Use the Eagle app to organize all your media assets perfectly. The Eagle app allows you to tag your images and videos, sort them with these tags, put them into different groups, and find duplicates so easily. It's a software I honestly don't want to live without anymore. So yeah, maybe it's also helpful for you. If you want, you can watch my video on the Eagle app where I explain all the important features over here. So that's it with my 10 tips for better travel videos. And that's almost tip right there. Where are you guys going to travel next? And which one of the tips are you struggling with the most? Leave a comment down below so that I can see what types of videos to create in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.